Well, hello, it's Jim Rism here, and you're watching Jim Rism, and uh, well, I just said that. Anyways, we're going to uh, make the strongest uh, cram cannon shell we can come up with, uh, because there has been some dif different idea and different testing, and I know some people are doing uh, parallel testing as we speak. Uh, but uh, today, I want to do my own cram shell testing, um, because I realized that I. Uh, I hear so many different things and I'm not sure the cram, sh the cram shells I use are the best, so we need to check that. Um, but here is a new ship I'm building. This is quite the chunky boy. Um, it is 300,000 materials so far. So this is kind of a large ship as well. I know I should be building uh, on the uh, Draconia, but uh, well. I like to build on this as well, and uh, you you can really see this is like the first time I've uh, I've made a satisfactory whole shape, don't you think? If you did, please uh, praise me for this shape because I was happy with spending a lot of time on it. Anyways, uh, since I learned a lot about armor and realized that wood might not be the best outer surface. Um, this has a 2 meter metal layer as an outer surface and that will help sh shells bounce off. And inside here we have like air pockets and stuff and then we have the checkerboard pattern followed by a uh, little layer of uh, era checkerboard. So inside of here we have a kind of safe space uh, and of course in the front it has some of these and uh, well, this is not all the space. Down here, we have some of the super important kind of space. It has less armor. It really does. Uh, so, like, that's an issue. But, like, the AI and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, it, it has its own armor. It's also EMP insulated from the bottom like this. Um, so, we we'll might boost up this armor a little bit. But I'm thinking that we're going to have, like important bits under here as well um, <clears throat> and hopefully they are a little bit more safe because of the water and it's kind of intended to go this deep but anyways that's not what we're here for so here I have my little cram set up and I just wanted to prove a little point here and that's basically you cannot make an armor that definitely protects against the cram cannon because cram cannons are a little bit funny. This is a 33 seconds uh, only hardener cannon. And uh, you can see we have 4 meters of heavy armor. And we have 4 meter wedge on top of that. So the damage will be much reduced. Then we have a lot of kinetic absorption. Um, yeah, like heavy armor and like a plick and like wood checkerboard whatever just shoots right through that one yeah it just goes straight through didn't care about that uh, but yeah this is like a ship won't have this strong armor you you can't protect against a, a shell like this either and if we make this hollow point you can see it would just eat health points we can probably just uh, by just destroying this chunk here so, of course, the hollow point won't penetrate, but you can see, just imagine the loss of health points from uh, just deleting these many heavy armor blocks at once. Yeah, so uh, that that's kind of that. Uh, just a little point. Of course, this is 33 seconds for a big cannon like this. It's uh, really slow. And actually, I'm going to set the reload to this to slightly below 9 seconds, so that whatever shell we shoot, it will be slightly below 9 uh, seconds. And that's just for like testing purposes, so we can kind of find out the best shell to use here. So here, if we make it much weaker, we can see that this dislike uh, damage is like much less. And especially if we remove the hollow point here, because then the... Uh, yeah, then the slope here really sucks up that damage. You can see it only deleted it and the block behind it. <clears throat> so, uh, quite some strong things, but when we shoot again it goes straight through like butter. 
And that's only because of we had uh, that's only because of the extreme angle we put them through. If I just remove these angular blocks here, I can just fire it and it goes straight through directly. And even if we add some heavy armor on top of it, I don't know if this will go through. Yeah, it just goes straight through. It's super slow, by the way, but it doesn't matter. For APS, it really matters what speed your shell is, but for crams, it, it doesn't matter. I can prove it to you. Show you here. Cram settings. Muscle velocity, 64 meters per second. I think it just stopped dead. I th yeah, it just fell through. Oh, yeah. It fell through down there, okay. Let's make it a little faster so that we can uh, actually see it go through. So maybe 100 meters per second. Yep. It goes, it, it went slowly, but it went through the same blocks. <laughs> yeah. So let's max that back to normal. And there we go. So we can see, uh, we really have to have that angle to be able to not get popped off like that. But this is this is of course a super unrealistic like armor. No one would use four meters of heavy armor in the front because that's just wasteful. Uh, you want to protect those heavy armor in the back, and you want to protect your health points as well. Oh well, one thing I kind of want to try is what if what if we do like this, like this this is a. This is an affordable solution, having uh, these beams going on here, and we're going to get that angle. We can even have stacked beams, eight layers. I hate to go through, doesn't matter. Yeah, so uh, now let's see here. This has a reload time of nine seconds, yeah. It has, uh, let me see the stats of this cannon. It's uh, it's uh, 9,000, um, it's it's 9,000 pellets. So it's a, it's a chunky shell, um, it really is. But it's not like insane. Like even though this is some inefficient cram, we could fit this system onto a larger cram turret. Uh, it would be a chunky turret for sure, but it can be done and it's definitely like worth the cost if you wanna have like an alpha alpha strike turret or something like that all right uh, so if I remove this layer uh, you have the kind of realistic or my setup I modified it a little bit so it's two meter metal and that's uh, makes sense and then we have uh, these uh, slopes and then we have a uh, layer of era shaker boards and this is just here because that's that seems to be what everyone uses now in armor a layer of era or at least era shaker board which is a little bit better because everything doesn't blow up at once but um only like okay that was a strong explosion but whatever it doesn't explode at once right uh, cram shells won't get stopped by era it uh, it even says here uh, if you if you post the video and read here yeah uh, so it it doesn't like era cram cannons uh, cram shells don't care about era right not at all and here we have a good kinetic uh, and metal shaker board which is nice here we have some applique which is useful for interior armoring so that's why i put it here and some internal pieces we protect with one, one, one meter of uh, heavy armor so i put it here and it also gets the boost from the metal in, in front of it we also have some surge protectors here and here just to test some emp shells later to see what it does basically and then we have a layer of physical connectors that's just mushy blocks if it went through here it's basically through and then i set up some of these to kind of ish symbolize the other side of the ship's hull and symbolize internal components and stuff like that that would get damaged uh, by frags and stuff like that yeah so let us fire this shell this one goes straight through uh, and uh, it can be a fatal shot in case uh, the target does not have a redundant system if they have a redundant system it does minimal damage though if they have like three engines and you shoot out one by just penetrating it well it didn't do much 
If you shot the AI by that, god damn it, that's a lucky shot though. That's a super lucky shot. But it can be done. You can accidentally shoot out the enemy AI no matter how much armor they have with a armor piercing cram. And that's a lucky shot. And I think cram cannon shells is is like I think I think armor piercing cram is the is the is the weapon in this game that can go the that can go through the most amount of blocks. So anyways, here we have a hollow point shell. And you can see it does some it does some substantial damage, but because the damage gets onto this like first layer, it gets eaten up by this metal piece here. If we fire it again, we can see it does more damage, but uh, we actually have some def decent armor against the EMP. <clears throat> right, so uh, one of our uh, comment section uh, engineers, if we would so call them, uh, called Nyko Pence, he's, he's recommending a shell that's basically frag and hardener. Uh, so now this is super higher in hardeners. Uh, we don't need that really. Um, it's good if we are facing enemy lambs, but for just testing, we're we're just gonna test this here. Uh, if we make this a frag pellet, let's see, can do it a little stronger there. Probably like that, slightly below, as close as below ten seconds. That's what I do. And I think he said to set them to 180 degrees or 100 and ooh, I think it was I think it was 120 degrees, but something like that, kind of wide angle. So this is a hollow point frag shell. And if we just slow down time a little bit for this, can be useful. It comes here, pops. We do some. Uh, mush damage there and then the frags damage some other components and I think this shell can be useful for like lightly armor targets but maybe not for heavily armor targets so just remember this pattern here if we just fire again I'm kind of a little bit I'm not sure how much the whole point addition does to this because it's like is there a difference though okay let's go here and remove the hollow point there is a slight difference there is we I think I think we get some deeper penetration with the hollow point activated because the shell doesn't explode quite as to the surface but it's not a big difference um, I'm not convinced this is a good shell um, I would do like this pen depth 10 meters there we go here we got some internal damage just like that also some frags going through there and there and I'd probably set this narrower narrow air in case we can't penetrate deep enough the frags will penetrate deep enough so here you can see we would have been able to cause a massive uh, damage here then there is something i realized uh, i like to use pen depth shells a lot uh, but time from first impact is likely much better now this is like uh, time from first impact set it to like set it to something you can see if we set it to 0 0.08 even though this is like not the max speed shell if you fire this thing it like detonates pretty lot pretty late right uh, and we want it to detonate after the heavy armor layer so we don't know of course how uh, how deep the enemy has armor it's probably not gonna be this thick because this is like insane but if we say we're meeting kind of a super ball ship like have this thickness of armor a lot of people would probably have more heavy armor and uh, yeah and not checkerboard pattern they will have less bulk and more compact I think we can actually probably we can probably insert that in the simulation 
because I'm not my I'm I'm not making stuff to bell myself and making stuff to bell our people so we just replaced this layer with two meters of heavy armor and there we go i wonder where it detonated though okay let us kind of uh, slow down time here a little bit okay now we need to do like this but um and there it detonates okay If we set this to be a little bit, detonate a little bit earlier, 0 0.01 seconds, let's see where it detonates now. Right, so it detonates much earlier, but now we do some, like the frags still go through the heavy armor. So, if we would replace this, oh, by the way, what I was going to say is that uh, time since first, um, t like time since first <laughs> surface or sur sur first impact, is better than penetration depth because I realized that this will probably detonate even though we are getting bounced by a shield. Yeah, so if we have some frag or high explosive, we can still do some surface damage instead of no damage if we get bounced. Uh, so that's kind of why. I, I think I will start going with this. Of course, it's much harder to tweak. And for just testing, we can use uh, pen depth instead uh, to just tune exactly where we want the explosion. And then we try to match that up as close as possible with, uh, yeah. Uh, did it impact from like detonations from first impact thing? Yeah, it's it's like good like that. Um, I don't think we can set it to lower than this, can we? No, we can't. We can set it a little bit later, 0, 0 0.02. But like realistically, in most scenarios, whoops, um, you probably want to set it earlier if they're more compact. But this can do some damage for sure. What I wanted to try here uh, is that. We're gonna switch to high explosive instead. So here we've got the same stats. And now we can see... Uh, now the early detonation got stopped by the heavy armor because the heavy armor is good at dealing with uh, high explosives. So this time the armor really did its job. But if we set this to detonate a little bit later We will not get through, really? Do we need to have it even later then? 0 0.06 perhaps, okay. Is it so that it gets stopped by the double heavy armor after that kinetic then maybe? That's possible. So we can set it to a little bit later. So, whoops, uh, in case we don't get through. Wait, now I, I now I just need to check here. If we set it to like an actual second after first impact, that's kind of insane. Right, so uh, the arm piercing value of this shot is so weakened after going through like these many layers of like this kinetic eating layer and the metal uh, it can't actually damage the heavy armor there like the armor piercing won't go through we can even set it to three seconds time from first impact let's reconfigure this to be an emp just so we know okay let's fire all right nope off. It won't go through. So this delivered it to the heavy armor surface and just, uh, well, it just fried all those poor AI components, poor thing. Maybe that's actually a strategy. Mm. 
If you go in contact with the heavy armor and just release a heavy EMP surge, it's possible that the enemy won't have good enough EMP protection this deep in. But it's... Uh, I would say EMP is good to throw in a cram shell, but I would never rely on only EMP. So... Let's say we do like this, 33, 33, 33. Uh, and then we, then we have a cram shell of like five degrees, really sharp angle there. And then we just kind of, let's actually do like this, slow it down. We're gonna refill the cram and just fire it and see her. Whoa. That was aimed upwards. Well, that's weird. I think we accidentally... No! Oh, sorry, I set the idle elevation to 5 degrees. <laughs> Let's see here. I need to press apply. There we go. Now we have frag cone. 5. Good. And if we fire this thing, poof goes through here bonk there we go it got stopped it got stopped by the uh, heavy armor layer for sure but the frag continued through we probably don't even need like a five degree but um yeah that went through there it i think it would suffice with like 30 degree or something like that let's have like 35 degree like that something And I'm thinking, ooh, yeah, well, let's fire that thing. So that's like more spread out damage, more likeliness to hit something important. Yeah, that's nice. One thing we definitely would wanna have is to have higher health of this shell. And we can because we already have all the health on this shell. Hmm. Anyways, let's just see an Let's just check how gimped this shell would be if we would make it a hollow point. It does some heavy surface damage though. Uh, but it won't get like through through. The heavy armor is intact. It's untouched. Yeah, hollow points are good. They are. But in my book I think hollow point only kinetic only kinetic hollow point that's a good shell it's a good auxiliary shell but I do not believe that uh, hollow point is hollow point with any combination I don't think hollow point like period is a good like main gun main cram shell you can have hollow point shell to tear asunder smaller targets and uh, like crush turrets and stuff like that, but you can't can't have it as a main gun. Uh, also, if you if you have a super big, 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 big cram, like we checked in our Doom Cram cannon, and it's just far at the turret and it has hole point and it just deletes the turret and that's all, no more damage. And it would almost have killed the entire ship, but because it hit the turret, it didn't do enough damage. So yeah, time from first impact. I think this is the thing we wanna go with. And you want to set this to. You want to set this to the in the zero point zeros. So probably zero point zero one, for like everything that doesn't use insane uh, armor. That would be really nice. But we can set it to zero point zero three. And this slightly get oh damn. That's a weak frag shell that got through there. Yeah, if we were, if we we're gonna go with this thing, 0 0.05 is probably the thing to do. Because now we can properly get through the, that layer and just damage the components behind. Here we can see, wow, the applic actually did its job. It went through two layers of uh, wood, one layer of stone. And you might be like, oh, two layers of wood, that's absolutely nothing. And if you check a, uh, let's check a, a beam of four meter wood, it has 800 health, yeah. 
and check at your normal fuel engine. It has like 150 health, so times four, what's that, 600? Uh, so it would delete a big chunky portion and then went through some stone and a stone four meter has like 1200 health. So I mean, you might think it's kind of not very impressive and stuff like that, but if these symbolize internal components, they would have been pretty shredded, uh, if not well protected. Right, so what are we going to set this up th with? Um, I'm kind of thinking, like, my previous, like, favorite shell was, like, mixing these things, like, high explosive and frag. So, oh, I don't, I, I don't remember your username, but I, I put to you, like, 50, 30, 30, and that's, of course, not, like, possible. Because if, if we do that, it, if we say... Uh, 50, 30, 30, applied to cannon, something turns to 100. So you were indeed right. Uh, 100, 60, 60, like this. And then we get, depends how sharp we want it, but uh, I think I think I said a little bit less sharp, like 60, no, like seven, I don't know, something like that. Um, really depends on the target, but this is usually a really good setup. Now we just need to adjust it to be have a reload of just below 10 seconds because uh, whoa, because otherwise we are quite unfair. One more. Okay. There we go. Ugh. God. Let me have 60-60, okay? There we have it. Very close. Uh, almost, almost there. But anyway, it's this shell. So we did a big bang here. Uh, and the explosion went mostly into thin air. But explosive has a good deal of capability of destroying some important blocks indeed. So let's set this a little bit later. See what happens. Does it go through? It does. It goes clean through the heavy armor, and then we got a big detonation here. Oh, we shot off this part. Yeah. So it really depends on why, where we want to tune this uh, position. But um, yeah, high explosive has a capability of dealing like a lot of damage in a small area like everything within this area gets deleted and uh, frag has a tendency to shoot frags that go far and just shoots straight through stuff so why i think it's a good idea to combine these is that if we get a good explosion inside of here um, let us actually just let's just do high explosive right Okay, this is basically the same reload time, okay? So high explosive. Goes through there, bang. Big explosion, you can see it deleted all those blocks there. Uh, if we would have exploded it before here, so... Like that, maybe? You can see a big explosion takes place here. It gets stopped by the heavy armor, for sure, but it's like, bam, very nice. And some of the... whoa. I need to watch this in slow motion, though. Right, it seemed that the explosion kind of leaked through that hole and damaged the other side of the heavy armor, too. And I want to see if that's correct. Goes through, bum, 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 explosion, right. Wow, is it so that it explodes? Wait, this was kind of a little bit different explosion area there. That's interesting, though. Let's just fire again. Let's just repair this thing. There we go. Yeah, it depends a little bit from time to time, but... As it does. Boom. It's like that. Now it went through. Yeah, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit on luck, too. But you can see it deletes like a big portion, right? 
If I go inside of here and we say you're a frag instead, and we set it to 180, and we do fire, boom. Uh, nothing went really through. We got a lot of shots w going out in random directions. And well, some of them could have hurt some component, but as you saw, like a lot of them weren't just flying without doing any damage. So if we set this crime instead to like the default uh, 60. There we go. Boom. Much better. It went through there. Boom. So say that we had some important like component like right there. Uh, it wouldn't be exploded. So that's why I like to combine frag and uh, um, frag and high explosives. Because I'm kind of think like I don't want to have a big angle of frag unless I'm doing like anti-air. I'm thinking it's better to have like narrower gap like 40, 30. You can even go like five or one if you want to just have something that just goes straight through it. Okay, let's set it to one just so you see here. And we can even do, we combine these things here. Right. And we just fire it when we have reloaded this thing. Boof, you saw that those frags went straight through. Like, basically nothing can protect against uh, that heavy cram frags. Those cram frags are quite dangerous. And then we got the explosion too. But to spread out the damage and increase the likability that we hit something like 30 degrees, something like that, it's usually pretty good. And when we also get an explosion, it's a good chance we actually detonate something important there. So uh, my conclusions from this is that we want a cram cannon shell that detonates after first impact. Now we can even see the frag shells actually damaged blocks behind it, even though they were also used to destroy the heavy armor. Yeah, so f uh, time from first impact is king and only use numbers in the 0 0.0s because otherwise they will go through the ship. 0 0.09 is for a super heavy armor, just like this thing, like the super, super, super. Uh, 0 0.09 but 0 0.05 is probably too long for many and like normal medium ships 0 0.03 should be do the trick because then we kind of penetrate here do the explosion there frag takes out stuff let's actually watch that again but in slow motion goes through there bonk <sighs> explosion now it went through pretty well too yeah so again my conclusion from this little thing so far i think penetration from first impact is the only shell we want to use because then we can detonate even though we bounce we always want to combine high explosive and frag we do not only want to rely on frag because the high explosive damage can do a lot of damage in one area and if it's something important that you can absolutely destroy the enemy's system and they will be a, have a very hard time to repair all the blocks until they're functional again. And if you only do that with frag, it might be better against other uh, faction crafts because the faction crafts don't use repair bots. But considering we're using repair bots, we really want to like wreck the system we actually hit. If we hit the system, we want to wreck it. So we want, also want to have explosive. But we also want to have frag because if we don't have frag, uh, the explosive might get stopped by a wall of heavy armor, as we saw, and just do no damage, just the outside layer of the armor, like we saw the good example when it actually did a perfect job of just defending the interior. Uh, then it's also good to have some ish sharp frag, uh, something below 40 degrees, I'd say, uh, 40 down to one degree, dependent on how deep and how wide you wanna penetrate, dependent on target. And then we can do some internal damage and then we can actually penetrate even though we have some really heavy uh, armor inside of there. And one thing I want to add to this is that it's usually good to have like a tiny bit of EMP going inside of here too. Okay, why? Because then we can do like this. But um, And you see? 
even though it penetrated really far, we can fry some components right there. Just fry them. And now this is 0 0.03, set it back to 0 0.09. 0 .09. Uh, and just fire again. We can see it went through that, did the damage behind it, and the explosives and the EMP work together with taking out frying those components. And the reason why it's good to have some EMP because it's really beneficial to fry some internal components like cameras and um, whatnot that we got in there. So yeah, from me, uh, from this little testing period, my conclusion is indeed that time for first impacts is the only way to go. Um, we can also use the laser targeter, but I only use them for AAs because sometimes I feel they're a little bit unreliable to set up actually. So I think this is good setup. And having the balance between high explosive and frag, I don't actually know. I think we might be a little bit frag heavy. We could probably use some more explosive on this thing, but that exact I have to remain unsaid because I don't know. But uh, regarding cram shells, please post what are your favorite cram shells. And if you feel that uh, there is a better cram shell that I didn't use here, um, and just post your suggestions and tips and like that. And if you're like APS nerd, you can try and convince us, uh, us cram people, why the APS is better. I like APS too, but I like crams a little bit more, I must say. Uh, you can try and convince us why APS is superior. But uh, I think that cram has an insane capability of just penetrating, penetrating insanely deep. But anyways, thanks a lot for watching this little uh, testing video. I'll see you next time. This is your host, Jim Edism, signing out.